Welcome back to Robert Lowe, where I show you the ins and out of graphic design as it pertains to t-shirts, logos, and GIF animations. And today for T-Shirt Tuesday, I want to show you how to make a t-shirt for your band, your marching band, or any kind of activity that you're involved in. So a little fun fact about me, before I became a graphic designer, I was a full out musician. I used to march in the band, I used to play in jazz bands and stuff like that. It was pretty much fun for me. And we used to have like a supporter t-shirt, which was kind of like the band t-shirt, which was kind of like a mix up because whenever we would wear that shirt, it was really like our uniform. And supporters wasn't always just people that was in the band previously. It was always like faculty and staff and students and stuff like that. And they always wanted to wear like our shirt or they would go to the bookstore and buy the university shirt, which really wasn't us in a way. I mean, we are like ambassadors for the university, but we actually had our own little thing. So I want to show you guys how to create a shirt just for your supporters and stuff like that. And the way I want to show you guys how to do this is with a photograph. So hopefully you guys like this one. If you do, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not. But with that being said, you guys, let's go ahead and make magic. in Photoshop and there's a few things I got to talk to you guys about first the first thing is we're using a picture so there's a lot of gradients in this and that's not gonna be good for like printing I mean yeah there's a little color here and there but the fact of the matter is if we wanted to do a screen print on this it's not gonna look good and it's gonna cost way too much for us to do so we got to figure out a way to pretty much take the color out of this and then put something else in it that's going to look good. So the way that we do this is called half toning. Now, all you have to do is go on the image, go down to mode, go down to grayscale. OK, you want to turn this into a grayscale. Then you want to go back into the image and you want to go down the 8 bit channel because we got to get this bitmap going. So we're going to turn this into an 8 bit channel and then we're going to go back to image and we're going to hit bitmap and we're going to go ahead and flatten all these layers which is just one right now now here's the thing i set this to a 300 resolution because that's like the size of the document and all that and that looks okay but the method that we're going to use like i said is a halftone screen so i'm going to click on that and then i'm going to hit okay now the halftone screen you got to set the frequency and the angle now i'm not the best at this or whatnot i've already set this to 55 and 40 from like the last time i did this or whatnot but from what i was told that's pretty much what you got to do and the shape either use round or ellipse I, either one works because round is an ellipse and ellipse is round i'm just gonna go ahead and use ellipse this time instead of round now off tops you guys didn't see too much of a change except the background becoming white and that's pretty good but when we zoom in you start seeing like the effects of what we just did as you can see there's a little bit more lines as you can see stuff is starting to get polarized and as you can see when we get closer it's just a bunch of little dots that makes up this image we're gonna go ahead and hit command zero and just make this a full screen again and then we're gonna go into image mode and back to grayscale and then we're gonna hit okay then we're gonna go into image mode and we're gonna go back to 16-bit channel and then we're gonna go back to rgb and that's pretty much it as far as that go now i want to go ahead and unlock this because by default it's gonna lock it up now what we want to do is just zoom in real quick and this is just something i like to do i don't know if a lot of other people like to do it but I go ahead and I use the magic wand tool to click on the black. And that's just selecting out everything that's black. Then with that, I'm just going to go ahead and put that on a layer mask. And that's going to give us something a little bit like this. But instead of having this, what I want to do is just bring up a new layer. And I'm going to hold down Command, Option, Shift, and press E to make a composite shot. Then I want to turn off that layer zero because I don't need it at this point. Now, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are like, why did you do that? Like, now we have like this and this is not all that good looking well let's just go ahead and bring up a layer solid and we're going to put this solid on white right and then we want to put this layer solid up under layer one and as you can see this is what we get like it's almost the exact same thing that we deleted out all we did was took out the white so i'm gonna go ahead and turn this off and i want to turn on those guys that you saw from earlier and with this i just want to go ahead and scale this up so i'm going to scale this up to like this and that's pretty much it as far as the half toning part go but there's a little bit more that i want to do like this doesn't say anything supporter this is just a t-shirt with a picture right so what i want to do is i want to make sure that supporters know that this is a marching band shirt and it's for them so what i want to do is i want to take out the ellipse tool and i want to make an oval starting from four of my rulers bringing this to 16 then i want to take the type tool on a new layer i just want to go ahead and click on this right here like that now this is just going to allow me to type on the path so i want to type out lubt and then i want to change up the font because i don't like the font so we're going to go down and we're going to pick 
I want to pick like a slab serif. So we're going to pick slab serif in our class. And I'm going to find that. So, And I think that looked good right here. Except what I want to do is just go ahead and scale this up some. Now as you can see like this T is kind of already outside of the frame. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of bring this in some. So I'm just going to bring it in like that. And then the entire thing can come over like that this just a little bit now up under this all i want to do is just go ahead and make a rounded rectangle tool so i'm just going to go ahead and just bring this out a little bit like this then i want to push the corners in to the side just i think maybe 120 pixels would be okay if i just do that like this and let that go and then i want to go ahead and turn that white now also in a new layer, I just want to go ahead and type inside of this supporter. And that looks pretty good. So I'm going to take the LUBT and I'm going to take the rounded rectangle. I'm just going to go ahead and put that into one group. And inside the group, I just want to go ahead and give it a stroke. So I'm going to give it a stroke of white. Then I want to put it into another group. And inside of this group, I'm going to give it a black stroke. I'm going to go ahead and drop down the supporter. And just to make sure that this is spaced right, I just want to go through and just kind of space out this LUBT. And to me, that looks pretty good. So what I want to do is just go ahead and command G and put all that into one group. And then with this, I'm just going to move this up to the top a little bit more like this. Now, this is going to be in front of that drum major's face, but that's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off that. And what I want to do is go ahead and put this into a smart object. Now, for me, I like my type to be vectors. I don't like the shapes inside of Photoshop because it comes out pixelated and all that stuff. And that's not the direction that we're trying to go in, especially if we're doing halftone screens. So what I want to do is just go ahead and select all this out and then go to copy and then place this into Illustrator. Now, inside of Illustrator, all I have to do is just paste this. And then I can go ahead and image trace that. And then with that trace, I just want to go ahead and expand it out. Now, I'm going to take the direct selection tool with this. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete the white background. I didn't delete the white background in the image trace because we need that white. But I want to also take the magic wand tool and I want to click on the black. And then I want to double click inside of the, the fill layer. Then I want to type in 364372. This is just my own little blue tiger blue. And that looks good. So what I'm going to do now is just select it all, hit command C, and then bring that back into Photoshop. And then pasting this as a smart object, I just want that to take the place of where the other one is at. And with that final tweak, that's pretty much it. Now there's other ways of doing supporter t-shirts. I just like this one because it's kind of classic. It's kind of old school and stuff like that. And you really want like that old classic look. Now what kind of shirt I made was an all over shirt. So this is just going to sit on top of everything. And that's pretty much awesome because if you're going to make a t-shirt that's going to be made out of photography, then you want that photography to be seen. I don't care what anybody say. Everybody wants to see their photography and they want that to be seen perfectly. So that's pretty much all I have for you guys today. If you like this one, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And in the comment section below, tell me if you went to college or if you played in the marching band. I would like to know. But with that being said, you guys, let's go ahead and get up out of here. So... Stay amazing, stay creative, but above all else, stay awesome.